Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids, where today a surprise guaranteed and one of the more powerful guarantees we've ever had is coming with a fairly underwhelming, I will say, apart from that, summon rush this weekend. So we'll we'll touch on these summon rush champions in a second. Let's touch on the juicy thing first. In fact, let me let me zoom it in so you guys can read alongside me here. And if I move this down and I move it across. Slightly awkward in this program, but hey, there you go. They're going to be launching a guaranteed champion event alongside this progressive chance event and the summon rush. Summon champions with void shards when it's active, and you are guaranteed to get White King Narcis with your 110th void shard. Uh, this event is up for 72 hours. So, first of all, 110 void shards. It is, again, like if you pull just in these guaranteed events, if the rate is at 110 Void Shards, you are getting significantly more legendaries than pulling in 2x4. But, of course, the big, big difference is you need to have 110 Voids at the one time to reach it. Like, if you are short, there's obviously no point in pulling. So there is that, so it's still decent that way. It is one of the... I think it is the most expensive Void Guaranteed they, were they up to only 100 before? Did they? I think they might have gone to 110, maybe. Did they go to 110 for like Eilil and stuff like that? And there's no question that White King Narcis is much better. How good is this guy? I think he is probably the second best HP nuker in the game. I think Taris is better. Um, I actually found Fatalis decent, though Fatalis is low damage, but he's super tanky. But he has a place in Live Arena. I do find myself picking him sometimes. But I don't know if I'll pick him much after this, because I think White King Narcis is better. I did showcase him alongside Ancora on the test server, if you want to see that. But we look, he's got very solid base stats, good HP, good defense as well, solid speed, crit damage you want to see. He's nice, he's got a solid aura too. Corruption Scepter is A1, single target attack with a 50% chance to randomly increase the cooldown. One of the target skills by two turns. If White Queen and Korra is on the same team, it cannot be resisted. That's kind of nice. That's actually a useful effect, right? You kill off, maybe you AoE nuke their, you know, their squishy targets. They've got like a tanky reviver, let's say a Duchess or something. You can A1 her and you've got a chance to increase her, her revive cooldown, which isn't too bad. So that's okay. Uh, otherwise, it's like a good A1. It's very strong A1 either way. It's still good, again, against squishy characters if you don't quite kill them if they've got a lot of protected buffs or something like that and that you can't kill them it will still wear them down his a2 three turn cooldown aoe attack ignores 25 percent defense so this hits pretty hard and where it hits really hard though is with the extra hit extra hit on targets under shield or strength and i didn't mention but we should probably mention immediately with his passive he ignores shield and strengthen and that is a very very big deal shield is very common at the moment in Arena, and there are some very powerful shielders, such as Marishka. Uh, Mithrala is fairly common as well. Um, he ignores those. Bolster set is is very common when you look at like the more high-end stuff, like for spenders, bolster set is super common. He ignores that. Uh, he also ignores strengthen, which again is, is very common and a very powerful... Um, again, Marishka brings it in, Mithrala, uh, etc., very very powerful defensive buff in arena like increasing defense is not that good because champions are typically running helm smasher right like lethal or cruel or merciless or whatever and you've got a lot of champs that ignore defense like this guy jorgid etc so defense is not very good but strength and really is he ignores both of those which is great and if they've got them he does the extra hit the damage from this skill cannot be decreased by enemy passives or masteries and it can't be increased by passive or masteries. I mean, yeah, you're going to lose a bit of damage from this, but the benefit of ignoring passives is huge, right? Ignoring a Duchess AoE uh, damage reduction passive is great. Ignoring Harima passive is great. Ignoring a Taras passive is fantastic. So all that stuff is real good. His A3, I found this doesn't hit insanely hard. The four turn cooldown double hitter does 10% more damage for every buff on the target up to 50% and 10% more for every buff in this champion, up to 50%. So yeah, if you've got lots of buffs on you and lots of buffs on them, it can hit pretty hard. Although again, it will be decreased by some defensive buffs, though he does ignore this. Ally protection is sort of the tricky one. That's gonna like half the damage it does really. But if he kills a target under three or more buffs, he puts block revive, which is great. He gets an extra turn if he kills an enemy when White Queen and Korra is on the same team. And then again, the rest of the passive, 
He takes half damage when he's attacked out of enemy turns, so by counterattacks or ally attacks. If White Queen Ancora is there, he takes no damage from ally attacks and counterattacks and stuff like that, which is, uh, again, it's, it's niche, but it's useful. Particularly good against Taris, obviously. Um, good against Lady Makage as well, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, funny enough, he doesn't gain a ton from her. Like, it's extra turn is nice, and this being irresistible is nice, or taking no damage is nice. He's already kind of tanky enough. I feel like he doesn't really need her. <laughs> he works just fine, but she was a fusion, so probably anyone that is in a position, like, let's be real, 99.99% of people that are able to whip up 110 void shards, whether by saving for long enough or by buying them for White King Narcissus, are gonna have Ancora. It's not gonna happen the other way around. She gets a lot stronger with him. So her A1 is actually a really good A1. If White King Narcissus is on the same team, it decreases the cooldown one of his skills by two turns. I do believe it still has the 50% chance. I think it's just worded badly. I could be wrong, but I think it does. Um, but again, that's actually a really nice effect, right? If you reduce the cooldown of his AoE nuke by two turns, he can just do it back to back, uh, which is kind of insane. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, yeah, the cooldown reduction for him is really nice. Uh, her AoE cleanse with a shield now also puts out strengthen. That's a really big power increase. Uh, her revive now does, instead of 10% turn meter pushback that can be resisted, it's now a 20% turn meter pushback that cannot be resisted if it's on White King Narcissus, and it brings him back with 100% turn meter. That's really, really good as well, right? You bring him back with 100% turn meter, you push their turns back, he's almost definitely going to take a turn. And uh, yeah, with the revive, she obviously brings him back with full skill reset, so he can just go straight into his AoE nuke, which is super powerful. Then even her passive gets way better as well, is that, um, yeah, she will try to obviously take crowd control debuffs off the ally with the highest crit damage, put them on her. At the start of her turn, it's just going to auto cleanse her of all hard CC if he's on the same team. And again, that's really good. So she can still be, you know, forced out by lockout, you basically cannot hard crowd controller. Like these debuffs are not super common in arena, but I mean you do see them. You see some fears every now and then. You always see petrification every now and then, like some mythicals and mithrala do that. Stun is around, uh freeze like torments. Like you see this stuff. Making her immune is quite nice, especially because she can remove them from him. So she becomes a lot better with him. He is slightly better with her. Uh honestly, his biggest benefit, I would say, from being with her is is more how her kid affects him, right? Like his moves improving is not that big of a deal, but I find actually Ancora's A1 with Narcis is really powerful to get back to his damage faster, like really strong. It even makes this sort of, a, makes this a little bit pointless because if she is there, he's gonna be doing his active skills way more often with the cooldown reduction. Um, and the revive on him is really powerful as well. So needless to say, I think he's really good. <laughs> so yes. 110 void shards for Narcisse. Is it worth it? For me, I've got 77. What am I going to do? So obviously, if you are a free to play or a low spender and you have saved up 110 void shards, do I think it's worth pulling them for this? Yes, I do. Uh, for me, you know, for, I'm, I'm maybe lower to mid spender, maybe more on the low end. Like I usually just buy the forge pass and the gem pack and then very occasionally I'm buy shards for videos more so. Uh, for me, I probably almost definitely I'm going to buy the rest of these shards. Bearing in mind, I'm a content creator, right? So number one, I get to make some videos out of it. Um, you know, it, it is a tax expense as well. You know that. So there's a lot that goes into that that isn't there for a normal person. So for me, I think it, it probably does make sense. I definitely think if you are a, a spender, like a medium to, to, to big spender, certainly I think any Kraken is going to just buy the void shards and get this champion. No question. Um, I think any, you know, some big spender, normal big spender, you know, like 110 void shards to buy all of them from nothing is a lot. Uh, so I don't know about that. But if you're like most of the way there, like I am, and you're a big spender, again, this is probably something you're you're probably going to do. So, yeah, I, like I said, I think he's he's pretty strong. He's mostly for arena. You know, I, I, I so is Ancora, by the way. I, I got some questions like on my... The show showcases for them, they're like, no, why didn't you show them off in other areas? I'm like, well, I just don't think they're particularly useful for other areas. I mean, they're fine, but they're not doing anything special for, for other areas that other champs that you already have aren't doing better. 
They're really for Arena, and I think that they are very, very good. I'm actually quite shocked that they're doing a Guaranteed for Narcees. I did not expect that. I really expected there to be, like, some 10x events for him. Like, I, I really kind of expect him to show up in, like, a 10x, maybe during a 2x Voids or something. Like, yeah, go for it. You got the Fusion, especially because we got the 5-star Soul for her. That's a really strong combo. Um, Yeah, I'm like... I'm I'm sure I pull some void shards for one of the summon events at some point, but like I'm pretty I was pretty close to being able to do this without spending any money. Like get Ancora, get the five star soul for her, and and pull the voids for him. I was pretty close to doing that without spending anything, which is I don't know is that good or is it bad? You know, close is not the whole way, as as we say. Uh, let's talk about then the progressive chance as well. Now the funny thing <laughs> about this. Progressive chance voids be Krutraxa and Supreme Elhane. Honestly, guys, I would advise pulling 110 voids for White King. I would advise not putting anything in. I would not go for either of these. Neither is useless, but Supreme Elhane was a previous fusion. If you wanted her before, you probably already have her. She's okay, but I think like her niche is sort of countering Necret. And honestly, like White King Narcissus <laughs> does that better. <laughs> Viking Narcissus is better at that. So I don't think you really need Supreme Elhane if you got Narcissus, honestly. Uh, and she's she's good. She's fine. She's a solid nuker. But I mean, you're already getting, I'd say, a better nuker. So I don't really see the point in pulling for her, uh, really. And uh, Krutraxa, again, she's sort of niche single target stuff. She's quite old, quite underpowered. She does have some uses, like for some of these Cursed City bosses and Doom Tower stuff. She can be decent as well for some Fire Knight stuff. She's not bad, but... I think there are way more better voids than both of these. So personally, I actually have both of them. I'm not putting anything in. Even if I didn't have these, I probably wouldn't put them in, right? I I just go, give me a better chance to pull one of the better voids, please. I I neither of these is really account changing. Uh, for the epics, obviously you can't put them in. Gembo and Ethlen, again, they're both fine. Um, I would not really be hunting out either of those as a new player. Like your starter champion is plenty fine. These are both upgrades over a starter champion for Arena, but um, no, I, I don't think you really need either of those, so I wouldn't be really caring about either one of those either. Now, when it comes to the other shards, uh, which are actually okay, uh, you got some decent stuff in here. Kyoku, eh, I wouldn't really go for Kyoku. Um, Nekmothar would definitely be, I think, my number one choice. Gwendolyn is good. Krokmar is good. Uh, and then Candy's okay, and Kyoku's okay. But yeah, I would definitely be going for Nekmothar for sure as my first pick if I was doing the summon rush with like Sacreds or something, right? If you want to do that, um, Nekmothar would be my pick um, for sure. Gwendolyn is actually quite solid. I like her for Hydra. I should have actually a video on her soon enough. Um, but yeah, Gwendolyn's quite quite good. Gwendolyn's worth getting. She can also be pretty good for Fire Knight Hard, right? As an AoE damage dealer with also decreased speed uh, and multi-hit A1, triple hit. So she's, she's quite a decent champion, uh, but she was a recent guarantee. Rockmar, uh, I've not seen a ton of stuff. I've seen a little bit of him like in Hydra, a little bit in Arena. I think he's a pretty fun champion. Personally, I wouldn't go for him um, in a in a 15x. Uh, I just like wait to pull him eventually, or maybe he could be a guaranteed bench or something. And that'd be sort of a fun novelty when I did pull him. I'd cer I certainly build him and I'd use him for a bit for sure when I pulled him. I'm not 100% sure how good he is. Um, but he, he's a really fun champion, but... Not a champion, I'm like, ah, I need to hunt them out in a 15x. Nekmothar would be more that that style. Miss Rider Dahi and Deacon Armstrong, these are both amazing. Deacon is is better, but Miss Rider's really, really good. Uh, but Deacon's just one of the best epics in the game, super useful. Miss Rider Dahi is really strong as well. So they're both fine. They're both actually good. I mean, if you, you're missing either one and you're pulling, like, you know, let's uh, say so you're free to play, you're missing these epics and you want to just get them, you know, lower points in the summon rush for the Titan event. Great. If you get one of them, happy days. Brilliant. Uh, you know, not the best chance to get him, but it's not the worst chance either. So it's fine. I think this progressive chance looks fine. Again, hilariously, I would just not put in any void. I just not put in anything if I was going for this. I just go in with the blank voids. Just give me the base chances. I'd rather that than these, which is a bit sad. Um, but there you go. I mean, they've given us a really good guarantee. They're putting in crappy progressive chance champions. Balance it out. Uh, this, of course, will tie in with the summon rush tomorrow so we'll see what the points are for that i mean nice thing for me this means hey i guess i'm going pretty hard for blade master then we're gonna do the summon rush so i'm gonna end up probably getting most of this i guess 
I might even end up going for this Eternal Soul Stone now. This certainly is going to make it all basically free for me to get the Blade Master Split Soul at four star, which is grand. That's cool. Because I was basically, uh, I was sort of planning to skip most of the Summon Rush, if not all of the Summon Rush anyway. Now I'm going to do it all. So that's changed up my plans. Uh, we might do a bit of an update on that tomorrow when we look at the Summon Rush as well. Um, yeah, we might do an update on the points because like, I think it, I was expecting Artifact Enhancement to have only 50. It's got 100. That doesn't really factor in too much because I think that this is relatively easy to do. I might do again a video on that soon as well. I think the champion uh, training is a bit few less points. So I have to just go back and double check and see how that matches up. Like I was thinking this would have like maybe 200 or something in it. That's uh, only got the 150. So maybe they just move 50 points. I was expecting from champ training to artifact enhancement. We might see that sort of stuff moving forward. Like artifact enhancements could all be 100 points in this sort of thing. They become important. Uh, anyway, that's sort of aside. Let me know what you think about the Summon Rush. And what do you think about the guaranteed White King Narcissus? Are you going to go for it or not? Probably most of you can't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious. What do you think about this as a guarantee? Like I said, I'm kind of surprised. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> but hey, there we go. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, is the, are they doing this just to help counter Taurus Marishka more? Is that why? They want to give everyone a bigger counter to Taurus Marishka? Like, everyone that spends big, right? Like, okay, Whales and Krakens, that is super dominated by Taurus Marishka. Screw it. Let's just, let's give them a guarantee. Like, they're Whales and Krakens, they're going to buy it. Let's just give them all a really good counter to it. Maybe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.